Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to take a few seconds to allow people to sign in. I can see that people are still signing in. Don't really want anybody to miss the early part of this because there's going to be a lot of information. Josh is going to be going through the question of profit elements uh, with sites for you. And we want to make sure everybody gets the full information. Now, of course, there will be a replay. But before we get started, what I'd like to do is just make sure that you can see the screen. You can see this sort of circle thing. Uh, you can see my mouse moving and hear me okay. So if you could put a Y in the question box, if sound and vision seem okay, I just want to make sure it's good before we continue. I'm getting lots of yeses already. Excellent, that's great. Thank you very much, everyone. So uh, we'll allow a few seconds for people to sign in. Let me tell you a little bit about what we're gonna do today in this training session. We're gonna try to limit this to a maximum of one hour. A lot of the information that you're gonna be learning today is um, something where once you've heard it, you need to go and implement it, and it should be possible to do this within an hour, but it does depend on how many questions you give us. We'll take as many as we can, as usual. Uh, if we miss a question, we apologize. Sometimes they scroll by very quickly. Um, so if we do miss a question and we need you to repeat it, we'll ask you. We'll pause from time to time, uh, and we'll give you time to give us some questions, and we'll answer those for you. If you need to ask questions later, because you might have thought of something later, not a problem, you can email us and we'll be happy to answer those for you. So this is about how to generate traffic, leads and money with your niche jet sites. So what I'm gonna do in a moment is just make sure that Josh's audio is working okay. Then we're gonna to have to pause the screen just for a few seconds while I transfer control to Josh. Now Josh is on a Mac, I'm on a Windows today. So what you will see is the screen size will change a little bit and then go back to full size for you. So don't worry when that happens. It's just because we've got two different systems running. One is Windows and one is Macintosh. So Josh, just to, to make sure your audio is okay, you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yep, I can. So let me just can get you the presenter. There we go. And also the organizer, yeah. So that should just take a few seconds. Yeah, I can see your screen now, Josh, which means everybody else should be able to see as well. So if I can just get a quick why in the chat box or ch a question box from everybody, can you see uh, the new screen and it should show Josh Spaulding's screen? So if you can just put a quick why in there. Yes, we're, we're good. We're good to go, Josh. Okay. So, cool. Okay. All right, we're ready. Okay. Well, uh, I think Eamon did mention that we're going to try to go about one hour. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the most important thing is I want to get through the important aspects of this training. We have a lot of people who buy niche jet sites and there's a ton of different questions. So uh, without going, you know, super long, I've done my best to make this concise and to focus on what's important. You're going to have opportunities to ask any questions you like, and you can go ahead and do that throughout the duration of the webinar. AIM is not going to be able to be with us the entire webinar. Uh, and so if you don't get a response right away, just wait. I will be going through these uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, the title of this webinar and what we are going over is how to generate traffic, leads, and money with niche jet sites. That's what it's all about. And that's what we're going to get into. And so the topics we'll be covering, these are kind of the four main topics. Of course, number one is quick and easy, just to don't, uh, transfer your domain, uh, but a very important first step. Monetization methods, that's a, a huge thing right there. And then creating new and expanding current content and then finally promoting your site. So all of the most important aspects uh, of your site we're gonna cover. <clears throat> uh, first, let's just dig right into this. I don't wanna uh, add anything extra that we don't need to. We're gonna dig right in and, and get to these important topics. So first off, once you get your, your website, uh, you may have already, or you may still be waiting on your website to be built, depending uh, on your particular situation. The first thing is we're going to register a domain for you. Now, if you've already received your website, you received a PDF and some other instructions, uh, which tell you make sure sometime, uh, preferably within the next week or two, uh, to transfer your domain, because a year from now, a year from the time it's registered, it will expire. And so by between now and a year, you need to get that transferred and you know how it goes. If you don't do it now, you'll probably forget about it 
and it'll expire and you'll be getting a hold of us hey when my site my domain expires so be sure to get with us about that get your domain transferred <clears throat> uh, you have received information if you received your site on how to do that if you have any questions obviously uh, you can contact us support.prosperative.com and we'll be happy to help you out we do have a youtube video that explains the process it's really quick and, and simple to do Josh, can I just uh, ask a question for the audience yeah. here? Because I know it's one we get regularly. Um, yeah. It sounds like it would be an obvious answer, but I know people sometimes are confused about this. When we talk about transferring the domain to their ownership, the question I see very often is, do they own this entire site? Some people don't actually understand that. So they actually... Oh, own, right. Yeah. Yes, you do. And the answer is yes, you own the entire site. Uh, Technically, until it's transferred, the ownership is, is, you know, with us, but we're not, you know, that's not something we're trying to hold on to. We want to get it over to you. So we want to make that officially yours as well. And so, but yes, absolutely. The domain and the site, everything, everything on the site is yours, your ownership. You, you own it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, what, well, skip that one already. Number two, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, we're going to spend kind of progressively a little more time on each point um, as we go through uh, determine your, determining your monetization method. Now, if we were getting into uh, website monetization generally at a high level, there's a lot of different things we could look at. We could look at, you know, uh, setting up e-commerce sites and membership sites and this and that. There's all different types of monetization. However, these are niche jet authority websites. And so, uh, niche jet sites are content sites, generally speaking. Now, we have had um, a few offers and we're never opposed to adding new site types. And by the way, if you have a request uh, for a new niche jet site type, a type of site that you would like us to start offering, please do let us know. We're always open to new site types. Just submit a ticket at support.prosperative.com. Uh, but uh, for this training, we're talking about content sites because the uh, Standard niche jet offers are content sites. So what you purchased was probably a content site. And so that's what we're going to focus on as far as monetization methods go. Now there are primarily, now again, we're, you know, we can't cover every single little, you know, possible scenario out there, but primarily there are two primary monetization methods that people go with when it comes to content sites, two primary, um, direct monetization, I should say, because there are indirect monetization. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. well. The two primary monetization methods for content sites are ad networks like AdSense, and AdSense would probably be the most effective and most profitable in most cases um, as far as ad networks go. Uh, and secondary, secondly, uh, not, not necessarily lastly, it just all depends, affiliate marketing. And so if that was confusing to you, I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit. So when should you monetize with AdSense and when should you monetize with affiliate marketing? It really depends. And I, and I know you hate to hear that answer, but this, mo this uh, webinar uh, is not to uh, get you hyped up on anything. This webinar is to give you uh, actionable uh, tips and methods to make more money. Uh, so Josh, first off, before you continue, uh, can I just yeah. make a point on that, Josh? Because I think that the, uh, the point you raised there was a good one. Um, and one of the things that we see people confused about many times is that there are so many different ways that you can make money online. And that's why they say, which one should I do first? And so on. Right. the good news for everybody listening is that whether you use technique A or technique B, if you put the work into it, they'll all generally work for you. Some will be easier for you than others because they may be technical or not technical and so on. Others will be, um, you know, more time consuming. So you may not have time. Some might be very simple. But the, the reason uh, Josh has said what he said there is that there is no single, simple, perfect formula for everybody. But the flip side of that coin is that that means you don't have to be perfect to make money. You just have to do something. And I know Josh is going to go on to that shortly, but it does mean you don't have to get everything perfect in order to make some money. And I think uh, Josh, I think he's going to come on to that on point four, actually. Um, and so that's the good news. And that's why when people ask, what should I do for monetization? It's so wide open 
because there are so many different ways to do it. And you'll probably instinctively feel, well, that looks a bit complex to me, or this one looks like I could do that, so that looks reasonable to me. Um, so naturally, you'll gravitate towards the things that are more, uh, shall we say, achievable. And that does mean you have to do a little bit of work. It's not tremendous work, but a little bit of looking at the options available. I know Josh is going to mention some more in a moment, but I just wanted to make sure people understand that uh, there isn't just this one single technique that you can use that everybody has to follow. There are plenty of different ways to do this, which is great because it means we can all find the way that suits us best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are good points. And uh, on, on to one of those points you made, uh, analysis, what is it, analysis paralysis <laughs> comes to mind. Yes. Yeah, uh, don't yeah. get stuck on, you know, choosing the perfect monetization method, etc. You learn as you go. And, you know, I think it was Michael Jordan said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Just just go forward and uh, take as much as you can out of this webinar and put it into action. That's the number one tip I can give anybody is just take action, It really, especially in the internet marketing space. So uh, with that being said, uh, the two primary monetization methods for content sites, and that is sites that you know focus on articles, perhaps even videos, but primarily articles, are AdSense and affiliate marketing. Now, some websites are gonna be more profitable with affiliate offers. Some websites are gonna be more profitable with AdSense. So how do you know which one is more profitable? Well, the first thing you wanna do is consider the traffic source. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, depending on how you're gonna be promoting, now you may be sitting here saying, well, I don't know, I hope you're gonna tell me <laughs> where the traffic's gonna come from. And we are going to, get into that. But if you happen to have a traffic source in mind, I'm going to give you a really good example. Pinterest. We've made a ton of money promoting our sites to Pinterest. And Pinterest traffic tends to be broad as far as relevance goes. And so if we have a bunch of images out there about um, home decor, for example, and they're pointing to a one of our home decor website or some of our home decor websites, uh, they're going to be landing on specific pages, but because the traffic is pretty broad, the person who clicks on one of those images isn't necessarily going to be 100% laser targeted to that specific landing page on our website. And so if we have AdSense ads on there, the good thing, the really, the, the, the reason AdSense is, is so big, has been so successful, is because those AdSense ads will show a targeted ad to that visitor. Uh, AdSense targets visitors individually. And so they know, in many cases, what they've been searching for on Google. They know uh, much, of, much about that user. They know their demographic information, et cetera. And so Google AdSense, the Google AdSense uh, platform is really good about delivering highly relevant ads. And so in, in that example with Pinterest, AdSense is usually almost always going to perform far better than any affiliate offer that you might be promoting on your website. Now, if you get your website ranked in Google and you are ranking for, um, let's say, rustic home decor, let's say you rank in the top 10 for rustic home decor and, and your, your page does, a page about rustic home decor. And now all that traffic coming from that Google search query is highly relevant to uh, rustic home decor. So if you, if they land on that page of your site and you have a highly relevant affiliate offer and that affiliate offer is, you know, I don't know, uh, an ebook with tons of ideas or, or, you know, I don't know, maybe it's actual decor, whatever it is that's laser targeted, that affiliate offer is probably going to earn you tons more than an AdSense ad ever could. Because with the AdSense ad, you're gonna make, you know, a dollar at best or, you know, very best, a couple dollars per click, but mo more than likely, you know, cents, 50 cents or, or whatever. Uh, with an affiliate offer, if you make the sale because it's highly relevant, you could be making $5, $10, $50, you know, the sky's the limit depending on what you're selling. And so the traffic source, how they're getting to your website is one of the most important things to consider when determining how you're going to monetize your website. OK, so that's a very, very important thing to consider. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, and the last thing is test. Uh, you just have to test. You know, sometimes you just have to uh, try different things, get different affiliate offers on different pages. Always think of relevancy, especially with affiliate marketing. Relevancy is so incredibly key. Um, if you can't find something extremely relevant, then you're, you're almost always going to be better off with AdSense ads. If you can find an affiliate offer that is extremely relevant to the page and also to the traffic, then affiliate marketing is almost always going to be more profitable. But sometimes you're just kind of in that gray area and you're just not sure. Well, you just test. You just test. Just try them both. See how much money you earn with each and just see how it goes and just uh, adjust from there. Okay, so those are the primary tips when it comes to monetization uh, for your NicheJet content sites. Uh, next, uh, build a list in almost every case. So this is <clears> that <throat> we're still talking about monetization. This is indirect monetization. And so you've probably heard the old saying, the money's in the list. <clears throat> I remember, oh, I guess it was it was over 10 years ago. Uh, maybe 12 years ago. I'm not sure. I had just got out of the army and uh, went out on my own with internet marketing and I was making a little bit of money selling eBooks at the warrior forum and things like that. And I remember I had not started building a list yet. I was making a lot of money with WSOs and things at the warrior forum and making a little money here and there. I was a ghost writer. I wrote articles for a few companies and, but I hadn't built a list yet and, but I had made some money through article marketing. And so I was getting really good at article marketing. So I wrote an ebook and called Article Marketing Domination. It's not out there anymore. You don't even have to look. <laughs> and I, uh, Jonathan Lachey got with me and he said, hey, I'd like to promote that. I said, well, hey, I'd like you to, too. <laughs> and so he promoted it to his list and he just made tons of sales and absolutely shocked me. And, and right as soon as he promoted that ebook, I immediately thought, man, those people are right. The money is in the list. And so in almost every niche, I'm not going to say every niche because there are some niches uh, where the traffic, the people who come to your website are only looking for something. Uh, I think of maybe tourism, a trip or something. Somebody goes on a trip to a, you know, a really expensive trip. They're probably not going to be come back regularly, but even then uh, email marketing may be profitable, but uh, in almost every case, building a list is going to make you more money. And in many cases it will make you, tons more money long term. So I highly, highly recommend that right away from the beginning. Now, again, don't get stuck. Don't let this keep you from moving forward until you have this all perfect. But eventually, and as soon as possible, start collecting emails from people co coming to your, your website. You can work to constantly try to get new visitors and new visitors and new visitors or you can retain those visitors who do come and you can, you know, if you had, even if you just had 20 people coming per day, if you could retain just, you know, five of them, those five every day, and that will snowball and you will continue to build your list. And then you can start to send new articles to your list and you can engage them and you can start to build rapport with them and a relationship and trust. And then you can start selling to them and you can start, uh, recommending affiliate products that you found. And then uh, hopefully eventually you can start creating your own products that you can sell to them and make a uh, much more profit than selling affiliate products. So uh, building a list is absolutely essential and you can do that through pop-ups. Pop-ups are very effective. I know a lot of people don't like them. <laughs> I don't particularly like them, but the reason you see them so much is because they work. They work. Uh, exit pop-ups work really well, especially for sales pages, but you could even do it for a content site. Uh, we use a, uh, first off, AWeber, GetResponse, the main email marketing services, which we recommend either of those. I really like GetResponse uh, and AWeber. GetResponse seems to be a little more, uh, I guess, shiny, you could say, maybe uh, these days, uh, but uh, in the internet marketing niche may not be uh, the best. I'm not sure, uh, but either one of those are fine and they do offer pop-ups. So you can create pop-ups within those uh, email marketing services, or you can use what we use. We use a service called uh, article marketing. Uh, what, what is that? I I can't think right now. Uh, the pop-up. Yeah, the pop-up pop-up. I was thinking of my old ebook <laughs> pop-up nomination, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, pop up domination. With, with pop up domination, you still need the auto responder. Correct. Um, right. So there's the two services there. Yeah. Just it just ties in with the. Yeah, if I may, the, there's a couple yeah. of points you made there that were great, and I'm seeing some questions about them. So this concept of building the list straight away, um, many people will put that off, as Josh himself did, as he told you there, and I certainly did, and, and you think, why didn't I do it sooner? The thing that Josh said earlier that makes a list possible is that if you target your audience right and you look at the source of the traffic, they're going to be interested in what you're talking about. If they're interested in what you're talking about, like most people, they're going to want more. Now, anybody who's been on webinars before knows that I'm a photography guy. I love cameras, all the equipment that goes with it. I read that content avidly. I buy far too much equipment and so on. I go back for more on a regular basis. So anybody who is well targeted and enjoys your content is likely to want more from you. And by the way, that's one of the ways uh, that people keep coming back to us because they tend to like what we do. And so, you know, people come back for more and more and more. People find the sources of information they like and they go back to it regularly. If you've ever followed a particular YouTube channel, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you see somebody on Facebook that you like to read their posts, it's the same thing. So when you're targeting a particular type of person with a particular interest, they want more from you. They actually want more from you. And by inviting them to join your list, you can satisfy their need. This isn't just about you making money. This is about you giving them something they are looking for. And that's why, as, as Josh told you there, they're going to keep coming back. And that's one of the ways you can increase how much you make. Because Absolutely. when they know you like you and trust you, they're going to take your advice more often, particularly if you're sensibly enough to give them very good advice. If you give them spam and nonsense, then you lose them. But if you give them good quality information, people are looking for that all the time, just the same way as you are right now. It's, it's just the way people are. So it, it's kind of an automatic consequence of having good content that matches their needs. Uh, uh, sorry, Josh, I know it was a bit long. No, you're there right. were a few questions about that. So it was, uh, I thought it was good. Yeah. To put in. And, you know, <clears throat> don't think of yourselves as a marketer. You know, you're just, this, this is how I was <laughs> early on in my career. I, I almost felt guilty every time I marketed to someone. I would feel like I'm, I'm trying to force something on them. Well, over time, and I think John really helped me to, to see this and others, uh, I realized, look, I, you know, I'm not a sleazeball. I'm, I'm not trying to rip people off. I mean, I, I actually do my very best to help people, no matter what it is in internet marketing or any market that I get into. I mean, I want to help people. If I help them, then they will come back to me. Whenever I finally got into that mindset and just realized the truth, it helped me so much. Uh, I, I no longer had the, the problem of being hesitant to market to people. Hey, I'm marketing to them. And yes, I will make money in some cases, depending on how I'm marketing, you know, directly uh, in most cases indirectly. Uh, but look, I'm actually going to help them. These products I'm promoting are helping them. These are good products. So, yeah, those are good points, Amen. And so for uh, the, the pop ups. So what do you offer? How do you get them on your list? You say, hey, join my list. Well, that's probably not going to work. I always, you know, if you already have a lot of rapport, if you're all, already well known, and you just put, hey, join my newsletter. Well, that might work. You know, if Michael Jordan had a website about basketball and he put join Michael Jordan's newsletter, you know, everybody and they're interested in basketball would jump on it. But you're not Michael Jordan and I'm not either. <laughs> and uh, unless you're very popular in your niche and known in your niche, you're going to need to bribe them with something. And so freebies work very well. Now, you also, if you're selling a product and if you're, if, if you're not now, hopefully you will be in the future in one way or another, whether it's ebooks or reports or software or something. You definitely need to be getting their email as well. Those are the best emails to have on your list are buyers. They have already pulled out their credit card. They have already paid you. You need to get them on your list. Uh, but until that happens, and even when that happens also, you build your list through uh, free offers, free reports and ebooks. That's how I did it. That's how I built most of mine. That's how John did it. That's how uh, Amon's done it. Uh, of course, again, we also are adding all the emails from new customers that affiliates are bringing in, et cetera. Uh, but eBooks and reports are a great way to do that. Um, WordPress plugins, you know, you can, you can have somebody on Upwork 
create a, a cool WordPress plugin for a hundred dollars. And you know, if that, I mean, some things, if it does something really simple, but useful, you could have one done for $50, you know, d depending on what it is. And so you just give valuable things away to help people solve the problems that they have. That's what it all comes down to. So build your list. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a big one. Uh, set up your autoresponder series. This is another thing. I, I tell you, I learned the hard way <laughs> in almost everything, in business and in life. Uh, I learned things the hard way. That's just how I learned. Well, this is another one I learned the hard way. After years of not setting up autoresponder series, I finally learned how very, very important they are. Now, I used the uh, idea, the, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. This is like sending this this sentence here I, I, I jotted down. It's like sending a sales rep to hang out with each lead for a few weeks. Now think about that for a moment. Setting up an autoresponder series is just that. It's like, you know, you're getting a cold lead into a brick and mortar business, for example. And of course you can't do this. You can't afford to sell to send a sales rep along with that lead and you just leave them and you know go about your business. But with email marketing, you can. With online business, you can. So why would you not do it? Uh, so setting up an autoresponder series is basically once they opt in to your list, once they get your report or whatever it is that you got them on your list through, first you send them an instant email. Hey, thank you. Uh, this is what you can expect from me. Can't wait to help you, whatever. And then, you know, you wait a couple of days. I usually just skip one day and then two days later, I'll send another, another email and you just keep on doing that. And, you know, you probably want to space it out a little bit more than two days over time, depending on how long your series goes. Uh, but even if you just had two or three or four emails in your series, it's going to help a lot, but you can go as long as you want, as far as you want, you know, just send them some useful info, build your trust through the, uh, through the autoresponder series, show them that you care, show them that you know what you're talking about and help them and it will pay off. Then you start promoting. And so now you have, you're building trust for every cold lead on autopilot. Once you have it set up, it's autopilot. You don't even have to touch it anymore. You're building trust. You're, you're feeding them good content. Then you're promoting to them. Then you're promoting good, good products to them. And so you just have this funnel, this sales system in place uh, for you on autopilot. It really is an awesome thing. I think if you would explain that to somebody 30 years ago, a businessman, he would just think, wow, that is just awesome. You know, so it really is a, an advantage that we have in uh, this modern world. Josh, can I just uh, make a couple of points on that? Because yeah. what you said is perfectly correct. But there's there's something interesting about this, which people may not realize. Uh, if you can go back to your other slide, that would be great, please. Uh, yeah. The one about sales. Leads. So the autoresponder is like sending a sales rep to hang out with your lead, your prospect. That's That's true. But it's better than that, because first of all, you're in their home where people are more receptive. Secondly, you get the opportunity you don't have to sell to them immediately. You get the opportunity to educate them. You can help them at the same time. You get the opportunity to turn them into, you know, that awful term, a raving fan. And by doing that, you also get the opportunity to have them demanding from you the next step, which is what do you have that I can buy that will solve the problem you've been educating me about? One of the things we've seen over the years is emails from people saying, do you have such as this or A, B or C that I can buy that will help me with D, E and F? We have people asking to buy from us because we've spent time educating them and even sometimes uh, giving them the solutions they need uh, you know, in order to solve the problem. But they may want an easier way to do it because a lot of things can be solved manually but take time and effort and learning. If you can find a shortcut to do that, most people want that. So it's it's better than just a sales rep. You actually get the opportunity uh, to make people your friend. And this is where that phrase, know, like, and trust comes from. If they start to know you from your content, which is sending by autoresponder, and they like it, they're going to keep listening or reading. If they keep reading, then they're going to get to know you better and like you and trust you. Because here's the thing, and this is self um I was going to say self-limiting, it's self-cleaning. Um, I can't think of the term, but it'll come to me in a moment. What happens is the people who do not like you, your information and your offers will disappear. Good. 
those are not the people you're spending time with. The ones who like you will stick around. It is a self-selection process. So when you build this list, the ones who stick around are going to be the exact ones you want to be on your list. And the ones who don't get it, the ones who don't like you, they don't like the things you say, they don't like what you're talking about, they're going to unsubscribe and disappear or they won't even look at your emails. So it's a, a self-selection process that gets better and better every single week that you do this. Uh, and if you can find something that's as powerful as that elsewhere, I want to know about it because um, the, the power of a list still is and always has been absolutely tremendous. And anybody who's making a lot of money is doing it off the back of a substantial list. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally agree. It, this really can't be over, um, overdone. If you take anything from this, uh, build your list. Use your site to build your list. All right. Um, let me see if I missed anything from that last one. I don't think I did. Okay. So next, I want to get into content. So with your new niche jet site, you received um, some content. Now that content is not intended to be it. Um, hopefully, you will expand on that. Now, can you take your site the way it is and profit from it? Absolutely. Uh, we did. We created a bunch of sites. Um, just just i guess you could say out of the box so to speak niche jet sites um, and made tons of money through pinterest um so depending on how you're promoting it you know that that's going to determine um, how much content you need to add but generally speaking uh, especially the niche jet authority sites they're intended to truly be authority sites to be authoritative and to really stand out in your niche and so in order to do that, you do need to create new content. And I know that's a bad word to a lot of people. They don't want to have to do that. But there are tools available. We offer several awesome tools, Insta Article Wizard and the Best Spinner and, and uh, several others that will help you uh, to, to do that. And whether you're writing it yourself or using those tools to, to help you, you need to do it if you really want to be authoritative in your site. And so... Uh, create new content and po and focus on topical articles. Now, I said in the, in the last slide, actually, creating new and expanding current content. So the content that we add to your websites, to your niche jet sites, again, are intended to be a good start. They are a good start. They're quality, they're unique. If it's the authority offer, if it's the regular niche jet offer, it's article builder content, which is still Google friendly. Uh, not 100% unique, but Google friendly, can rank in Google. The niche jet authority site offer um, is 100% unique, handwritten, just written uh, moments or days before you actually uh, received it. But uh, not necessarily, um, uh, I'm trying to find the right word, a topical piece that I'm going to talk about now. Now, what I want to get into now is topical articles. So, when you promote your website, let me give you a, um, I don't want to call it a secret tip, but an important tip uh, that a lot of internet marketers seem to miss. Promote your articles, promote ideas and tips and advice and not your site. Uh, I, I heard one person who, who runs an internet marketing agency and who sells to local businesses, he told me, he said, you don't sell websites, you sell profits. And so whenever you're trying to sell a website to a local business, it's not that the best way is not to say, hey, I, I build websites. I can make you an awesome website. That's not a very good sales pitch. Your sales pitch is, hey, I can make websites that make you more money. I can make you more money. As a matter of fact, you just leave out that first part. I can make you more money. And here's how I can I can create a website that will, you know, da, da, da and make you more money. And so. Uh, in marketing, any kind of marketing, what you want to market, what works the best is helping people with their problem. So instead of promoting your website, hey, I have a website, whatever, you want to promote the topics in your articles. OK, so let's say it is weight loss. Well, you have a weight loss website. You just received it from us. Awesome. Josh, now. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think you. Are your slides frozen? Because you've got a couple of slides about these points and it doesn't seem to have updated. I, that might have just been my brain frozen, Eamon. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I, I just have, I just didn't skip to it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, pro focus on promoting content, not the site. 
And so here, yeah, here's that slide Eamon was reminding me about. Uh, here's an example. Stress the benefits. Hey, check out my weight loss site. Or this diet produces an average of 30 pounds of weight loss. Now think about that for a moment. If someone came to you or you came to a website and says, hey, check out all my awesome articles. Just browse through and, and let me know what you think. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not very appealing. It's not very uh, appealing. Now, think if someone came to you and said, hey, this diet that I'm going to, to tell you about, that I'm going to reveal to you, produces an average of 30 pounds of weight loss for every person who, who does it. Now, which one of those is going to be more appealing to you? I'm pretty sure it's the second one. I know it is to me. And so keep that in mind whenever you're promoting your site. You're promoting what's on your site. You're promoting ideas. You're promoting solutions to problems. People have problems, and you need to come up with the answers and give them the answers. That is what will get people on your site. That is what will get people interested to opt into your list. That is what will get them to your ads to click on them and to make you money. So promote, uh, stress the benefits and not just the website. And so uh, I think I, let's see. Okay, so getting on to that, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, the topic that we just hit on um, in this section here, but we're going to get on to actually promoting your website. Amy, did you have something? Yeah, well, the, and you've, you've shown the screen there, which is everybody wants to get to step four immediately, which is understandable. We, we know that. But if you promote your site too soon, there is a sequence. And actually, your next slide shows that. You've, you've got to do steps one to three. There's a foundation. Nobody builds the roof of a house before they've built the foundations and the first floor and the second floor and so on. So there is a sequence and an order of steps that makes everything work better. You get the site. You put good content on it. You add extra content. Then you start promoting the benefits of the information. That makes it easier to promote the site because now the site is worth promoting with information of value to your visitors. That, let, let's, let's be honest. People come to your site not because they want to give you a ton of money, but because they want something from you. If you provide right. that to them, then you've satisfied their need. Now, some will walk away. That's fine. Some will stick around and eventually click on things and buy things. But you can't do any of that without those first fundamental steps that Josh has gone through, those steps one to three. We know that everybody wants to jump to the number four and then, you know, the making money bit. But the people who try to jump like that, they fall down a big gap in the middle and make no money. The people who do, let's be, again, let's be honest, the people who do the boring stuff, that steps one to three, we know it's boring. It works because it sets the foundation that works for everybody who does it. It's a really simple formula. Most people can't be bothered to do it. We've seen this time and again, Josh. You remember that how many yeah. emails we get from people? Why didn't it work? And we ask, what, what did you do with your site? Nothing. There's your answer. Uh, so steps one to three, we cannot emphasize it too much. Please walk before you can run. And that's the whole Absolutely. point about, you know, don't jump too quickly. Yeah, and we've done a lot for you. I mean, the, the niche jet sites in and of themselves has taken, I mean, a big step forward. And what's left for you to finish one through three isn't really that much, but you need to make sure you do it. And it, it not only makes it easier, but it makes it possible. Now we've built, you know, these are optimized sites, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you have some good starter content. You don't have to worry about that, though it's always good to beef it up. Uh, but there's really not a whole lot, but you just need to make sure that you do do it. It makes it easier and it makes it possible. If you start off on a ground, a bad, uh, groundwork framework, uh, then you're not going to be able to, you know, get very far. So it is very, very, very important. Uh, so uh, the good news, this is the legwork that is the barrier, which keeps many people out of the land of success. I, I, I there's a book. Um, I wish I could reference his name. I should have wrote it down. Um, a man who is dying from pancreatic cancer several years ago. I think he's kind of gone viral. You, many of you may already know who I'm talking about. Um, he said, brick walls are there for a reason. They're there to keep people out who don't want it badly enough. And it was such an excellent quote. It stuck with me uh, after several years since, since he said it. Uh, I think he passed away several years ago. Uh, but it's the same with, with these sites. 
uh, people who don't want to do anything, who don't want to put these things into action, who don't want to focus on building their list, uh, they're not going to get very far. Well, that's good news. That's good news because I'm here to tell you that many, many, many people out there fall into that boat. And so those who are willing to stick with it and move forward and not give up because they went two weeks without making any money, <laughs> those are the ones who are going to have a much greater success, uh, chance uh, at success. And so uh, keep at it. And we're giving you everything we can possibly give you to get you there. And we've done, we've done it. We've, we've created many, many very profitable sites in our uh, 15 years, 45 combined years, 15 years apiece approximately uh, of internet marketing experience. We've done it and we're giving you everything you need. So this isn't just a shot in the dark, but you just have to go through it. So uh, promotion should be focused on pieces of content, not the entire site. Now, we've already discussed this, but I want to talk a little bit more about that because I want to talk about um, what I call topical um, articles. OK, so topical articles are articles that are not just four or five hundred word, words long, but they are articles that can span, you know, up to two thousand twenty five hundred words long. Now, before that scares you too much, think about this. Would you rather write a bunch of different shorter articles which have the potential of ranking for perhaps two uh, or three uh, max different long tail keywords? Or would you rather write a 2,500 word piece uh, of content that can rank for, you know, up to 20 or, or, or even 25 or so? Uh, different long tail keywords. I know I'd rather do that. And not only that, but it also gives you a much, much greater chance of ranking for much more competitive keywords in Google and in Bing. And so, yes, this is specifically directed toward SEO, but it's not only SEO. It's not only Google and Bing. It's also Facebook and just organic um, marketing online and it's becoming more and more social media than anything too. And so this is beneficial in many different ways. Focusing on uh, topical articles is very important. Uh, people see them as authoritative. So people are much more willing to share them. And we actually provided a infographic uh, recently. Uh, I think yeah, we did send it out to the email list. Um, that kind of points out the actual data through some studies that have been shown that show that topical long articles that just are kind of authoritative on that topic do so much better, multiple times better in many different ways in link building and direct traffic and building your authority of your entire site uh, and ranking in Google in every way you can imagine they do better. Amen, do you have something? Yeah, I think... I would like to illustrate the point you've made. Josh has made a point that is really, really important about authoritative sites and topical articles. Let's pretend we're talking on a webinar. Let's pretend this is a site because you're coming for information. So, so far, we're 43 minutes in. Uh, Josh has covered a great deal of ground with this. We, we've had conversations and questions and so on. Let me show you what a short, um, a short style version of the webinar would be. And then I would ask you to consider do you prefer the short form version I'm about to do for you or the in-depth that we've just done? And please put a why or no, why or in when, when I've done this. So this is the short form version. When you get your site, put good content on it, build yourself a list, find some good products, and then you'll make some money. It's a bit of work. Which do you prefer? Because one is giving you information and how to's. The other is just giving you a bunch of headlines. So did you like the second one, the one that took me 15 seconds? Do you prefer that to the full in-depth that we're doing? Just put a Y or an N because that love. No, nobody likes it. No, that, there's the very proof for you that good information, even though it may take time, is of more value to real people than, you know, this kind of waffle that you often see on. on. If you look at low quality articles, we use the term filler. They use a ton of words that say nothing. And when you've left it, it's like, OK, well, I'm no better off than I was. I don't know anymore. I can't achieve anything anymore than I've been doing already. It's given me nothing other than taking a few minutes of my time. If you walk away from something that has substantial value, now you may not put it into action, that's for sure, because not everybody does. But you will know that you've been given valuable information. And so topical content on an authority site, <clears throat> excuse me, um, where it's substantial 
offers value that people do not see very often. And Josh had um, a minute ago, he was saying, this is the thing, the barrier for most people, they simply don't take action or do the right things. That's great because it means any of you who take that action, you're way ahead of the crowd just by taking that action. I mean, that, that, that is so absolutely beneficial to you if you do that. And it's great. People are saying no. So that, that proves the point, Josh, that people want the information. And the site visitors for our audience today are the same as the audience. They, they want information. They're looking for information and answers. So we're all the same in that sense. Absolutely. And the, the, the man who I quoted is Randy Posh. He was a professor, professor um, at a well-known college. But yeah, and, and uh, you know, even if you hadn't gone through the entire webinar, think about this would you be more uh, liable to link to and recommend the one hour webinar as opposed to that short 20 second uh, excerpt that Amon just gave you absolutely it's more authoritative even if you didn't even go through it it would be more trustworthy to you it would be more authoritative so it really is a, a really really good idea to focus on more authoritative pieces of content uh, that will really make your site as a whole that much more really, truly authoritative than to focus on a bunch of shorter pieces of content. So we highly, highly recommend that. Next, get the most out of your content. Now, with Insta Article Wizard, we just launched uh, the 4.0 version. This is not a promo webinar. This one, I'm not here to sell, but uh, using Insta Article Wizard 4.0, we actually implemented this methodology because we knew it worked. And so... Um, basically what I'm saying is you write your article and you create a video out of it and audio out of it and you post uh, the audio to podcast, you post the video to YouTube, etc. Now you might be saying, well, I just said, you know, you just told us to make these long authoritative articles and now you're saying turn them into videos. That'd be an extremely long video. Well, first off, you can do that. It's, it's, it's not uh, impossible. And it's not necessarily bad. Again, the video would be seen as very authoritative too, though it's very long because it's very long. But you can also just do the uh, short excerpt version of it. You can just kind of take a uh, high level overview of the in-depth article and create a video using that shorter script and then post that. Either way, no matter how you do it, post the uh, embedded directly within the article and then take the audio version of it and publish that to um, any you know audio publishing website, podcast website, whatever. And then uh, most of those have an embed code that you can embed uh, episodes onto your post as well. So then you have the text version, the video version, and the audio version. And this can really, really benefit you. Um, I have a personal site uh, that just absolutely exploded uh, after I created the, I, I took the post, the article, and I created a video out of the exact same text, and then I uh, embedded it on the post. The post went from getting very little uh, views, very little visitors, to it's over 100,000, I want to say, um, video views right now. It gets tons of comments every single day. It's getting comments. I can't even keep up with the moderation of the comments. Uh, and so, it works. It really does. And sometimes it's hit or miss, but in every case, it's going to be beneficial. You're going to get the absolute most out of your content. So we highly recommend you do that. Next, build quality backlinks. So quality backlinks um, obviously are still the number one thing for SEO. Now, when if you are creating a topical articles and you're really focusing on um, on really authoritative pieces of content, it's really going to help you, especially long term, but even short term, in building links. Because that in and of itself, once your site gets out there a little bit, that in and of itself is going to uh, attract natural links. And that is where your really powerful links come into play. But uh, starting off, you'll want to start building some on your own. Well, how do you get backlinks? tons of different ways. Uh, manual backlinks can still be somewhat beneficial. I'd be careful uh, with that. But the most powerful way we've found uh, that's still very, very, very effective, even to today, is guest posting. And so you're offering, um, 
you're offering people to write a 100% unique article for their site. And these are obviously relevant websites to yours uh, that hopefully have as much authority as possible. And you say, hey, I'm so-and-so, uh, you, you might want to offer uh, some sort of credibility. You know, I have a degree in this or I have experience in this, you know, something to lend to your credibility as much as possible and say, hey, I'd like to write a unique article for your website. Uh, the only thing I would ask is that you just in the about the author section at the bottom of the article or at the top, wherever, that you include a link to my website. And so a lot of people, uh, believe it or not, will do this. A lot of people who have authoritative websites, we have gotten tons of really, truly authoritative websites to say, yeah, great, send it over. <laughs> and so we, we've gotten hundreds, we've probably over a thousand links like this to various websites and we have gotten tons of top 10 rankings so that is i believe the best technique today to get uh high high rankings amen do you have some yeah but just in case anybody is concerned that they don't have credibility and therefore won't be able to get guest posts i would also say that when we first started doing this ourselves and the testing and then trying it out one of the things that worked was to say to people, I'm a new writer about such and such a topic. I've started a new site. Um, could I offer you a high quality article of X hundred words, um, totally free. And, you know, here's an example of my writing. And all I would ask in exchange is that you have a link in the author information. So you don't necessarily have to have established credibility right now. One problem that you will get is if you pretend you have credibility, people will see through it. So if you if you are in a new niche or topic, it may actually be beneficial to be honest about that and you know sort of appeal to people uh, on an honest basis. Because even though it may sound like some of these are your competition, it's surprising how many people have websites and are not really experienced marketers, and they're quite happy to get content because content takes time to produce people are busy so even your so-called competition may be glad that you help them out as long as you provide them with quality and of course the other thing you can do and this is this is really cool one of the ways you help them make the decision to say yes is you reduce the risk for them how do you do that what you say is i will provide you the article if you're happy to take a look at the article on topic a if you like it, please use it. It's yours, free, it's unique, totally free for you to use on your blog site. Um, I would ask for a link back. But if you don't like it, feel free to say no and reject it because, you know, it's, I'm just asking you to take a look. You're not committed to anything. You don't have to get a definite yes from people before you send them an article. What you need is an, okay, I'll take a look. And then you give them a really good article Come on, what are people going to do when they see a good article that's going to save them two hours of research and writing time? How many are going to say no once they've taken the time to read it? So you reduce the risk to them. You make the commitment smaller for them. It's easier for them to say, yeah, I'll take a look. And then you yeah. take it to the next step. So it's it's micro commitments. That's a terrible salesman term, but I think most of you know what I mean. So we, we instead of saying, will you give me a link um, and this goes back to your point, Josh, about stress benefits rather than, um, you know, I've got an ebook. You stress the benefit to the user. Stress the benefit to the person you're talking to. I can produce an article on this topic in the region of 1,000, 2,000 words. I can give you a video to go with it if you like. It's yours totally free. You can put it on your blog site. You don't have to do any work to create it. Stress the benefits to them. And then you've got the killer. The killer line is, you know, all I need you to do is take a look. You don't even have to say yes at this point. Just would you take a look for me and let me know whether it's suitable for your blog. So you're re reducing the risk. Yeah, and that's a really good point. And, and it actually reminded me of something that I missed. Uh, you want to absolutely, as soon as you can, start providing links to articles that have been published on other sites. So that is one of the top keys to marketing, marketing in general, and that's social proof. Whenever you can tell, you know, have you, have you been to the sites where it says so-and-so just ordered? This person just ordered 30 minutes ago. This person, the reason they do it is because it works. It's social proof. Uh, you know, the best spinner has 90,000 plus users that skyrockets our conversions because it shows that it's powerful. Um, things like that really work. And so whenever you show them and you say, hey, here's some links to articles that 
I've published on other uh, websites, they'll see, oh, so others have already agreed to this. So uh, this might really be a legitimate person and I can trust them because others have trusted them to do it. So that was a really good point. And, oh, and uh, also we've found that at the very beginning, uh, you won't get as many people to agree to it than after you start adding them. So you'll still get some, you'll absolutely will. A lot of people will agree to it, uh, but it takes time. And over wait, well, it takes time to increase the conversions. I shouldn't have said it takes time because you can, you really can get uh, people to agree right away. A lot of people will, but it takes time to uh, get it to the point to where, you know, you're sending out emails and you're just, you're getting more than you can even handle, which is oftentimes the case. Um, and so the more links that you can insert in your email that you're sending out to contact the people showing that you've already had some published on other sites, the, it will greatly increase the conversions of those who will agree to publish content. Okay, so uh, build quality links. Guest posting, that's what we're talking about. Forums, testimonials, those things still work. They still help you. Now, you know, you're not going to rank top, top 10 for weight loss in Google with forum links. I can guarantee that. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. You know, if you're already taking part in forums, getting some links in forums helps. Uh, testimonials, you know, uh, providing a testimonial, um, specifically in the internet marketing niche, but not just the internet marketing niche, uh, a lot of niches out there. If there's a product and you want to review it, get with the owner, say, hey, would I, I love your product. I'd like to give you a testimonial. Would you mind uh, giving me a link on your homepage to, you know, with my testimonial? Those are solid backlinks too. Um, just Josh, think about um I've got to interrupt here, if I may, because I've got to tell you a story, a true story, and it's a funny story about a testimonial. Um, I actually gave a content provider that I bought many pieces from many years ago uh, a video testimonial because it was good quality content and it was expensive, but it was great. Somebody saw that job, somebody in London actually, sorry, saw, saw the video, um, and he looked me up on uh, Facebook and the internet and so on and saw my various sites and what have you. And he contacted me through LinkedIn, actually. He offered me a job. He offered me, I didn't want it, and you know, but it, it, he offered me a job based on the video testimonial I had given somebody else in a totally unrelated field. He offered me a legal job. And <laughs> on the basis of seeing, first of all, details of who I was and how he could find me, and the way I spoke about the content and the quality and so on. And what he was looking for was somebody who had that particular type of uh, delivery of information. Now, of course, that wouldn't work in every case. But the point I want to make is that you cannot know what that might bring you. And Sherry Harris, if you remember, reached out to people with articles. We've had Sherry interviewed her on webinars in the past. She reached out to people offering to write articles for them. And she got a deal with a Hollywood doctor. Now, he's, he's actually subsequently passed away, but she got a deal with the Hollywood doctor. She was offered a product line that somebody would create and they would share the, the ownership and sell together. Uh, and she actually went on, based on the uh, outreach that she'd done to other people providing articles to them, she was ill for a full year, but her websites were making enough money from the links she had generated to survive that year financially. Now, that didn't happen in two weeks. Don't get me wrong. You know, she put in all the work that we were talking about. She reached out to lots of people. She did lots of articles. In fact, she she couldn't cope with how many articles she needed to do because she was getting so many people saying, yes, please. But the, the results you can get can be astonishing. And I'm going to tell you something else. And, and this is true for Josh. It's true for me. It's true for John. When we saw the results, we couldn't believe it. And we had no idea originally that the results could be so amazing. But now we've seen it happen in multiple cases. We know it's a simple after effect of reaching out in the right way, spreading the word, putting out good content, getting your links out there. It just, a, you know, B follows A. It's that simple. As long as you do it. As long as you do it. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I continue to be surprised over the years that uh, where, you know, JV deals and big sales and, 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 Bit, you know, ex valuable contacts come from. <laughs> Sometimes it comes from those forums and from those testimonials and things like that. So just do it, take action. Uh, let's see here. 
Okay, so we've covered that, and we're about to finish off here. Uh, Facebook and social media, I don't have any in-depth uh, training on this other than <clears throat> take part. Take part in it. Um, it's not a bad idea, especially once you get products going, to start playing with Facebook ads. Um, Facebook ads are excellent to build a list as well. And so um, depending on your situation, your level of experience, and your confidence in doing that, um, Facebook ads can be profitable. If you have a little bit of money, it doesn't take a whole lot, really. Um, you can you can really make some ground just with, you know, fifty dollars in Facebook ad spend. Um, you know, once you get your freebie going to build your list, um, test out some Facebook ads. See if you can get some traction going there uh, to where you're building your list through that. Um, just take part in the organic, you know, atmosphere. Start building your authority and your your brand within that niche. So. Facebook and social media in general, obviously, it's it's getting bigger and bigger. It's huge. Everyone and their brother is on Facebook. And uh, so just taking part, uh, sharing your articles, you know, create a, a page, a fan page for your, your brand, uh, get things out there, get the widget on your website, uh, get, get, get yourself out there in social media and really creating those uh, topical pages, those authoritative pages within your website is going to really, really make the, all the difference in the long run. And the goal is those topical authoritative pages really taking off organically, just naturally in Facebook and social media and Google and everywhere else. <clears throat> a pay-per-click usually is not profitable with content sites, and I uh, spoke a little bit about that with the Facebook ads, but also Google AdWords. Um, almost it's it's it would be a very rare situation where it would make where, where you could make that profitable um, so it's usually not going to be the best thing uh, where, where it can be very profitable is when you do start to create your own products to promote your products through Google AdWords because it's so laser targeted to get your ad shown for you know blue widget um, when you're selling a blue widget is incredibly valuable very high conversions but for your content site it almost almost never makes sense to run Facebook ad or uh, I'm sorry to run uh, AdWords ads for example to a content site you're just not going to usually you and I'm and I I do say usually not always but usually it's going to be tough depending on what you're doing uh, it can help build up momentum though if you have excellent content and you're getting people on your list particularly Facebook ads I believe more than anything can really it can even if it's not directly profitable immediately profitable um, if you play your cards right um, it could help you to gain some momentum if you have some really good content on your site um, you know running some Facebook ads to get some excitement to get some followers get some people on your list can end up uh, earning you a lot more money down the road uh, so work toward your own product, and this uh, this I kind of hit on a little bit before, but hit, doing your own product is really the where you're going to make the most. So you know your your authority website, you have it because you want to make money. In most cases, maybe you have a nonprofit, and, and that's not really your goal. But in most cases, it's to make money. And so if you're doing this to make money, you want the most relevant product to your site traffic and to your website that makes you, you specifically, the most money. And so promoting somebody else's affiliate product can make you a good amount of money. Um, going with Google AdSense can make you some money, but you want to have the end goal of promoting your own, producing and promoting your own products. That should be the end goal. And so your content site is kind of like the hub of your business. And so that's like the headquarters where people come to learn and to train and to get to know you. And then they're sold on the products and they get they get into your sales funnel. They get into your email list and then you're promoting new products and new features for your products, et cetera, as you go forward. And that is really where kind of the honey hole, uh, so to speak, is in creating your own products, though it's not absolutely mandatory. There's so many different options and ways to go. But uh, that is what we recommend to try to go uh, towards that as your end goal. That point, Josh, can I just um, make a very quick <clears throat> yeah. comment, which because some people would think, well, I don't want to make a product and how can I do that? One product I've seen over the years, which is it sounds surprising, but it even works in print magazines and so on, is a, um, a, a some, not a, a, 
I'm trying to think of the word, it'll come to me again. But if you have a lot of good content on your website, you can repurpose that into an ebook and there will be people who will pay for it. Now, there are, uh, I'm going to use my example, which is photography, because I get a lot of photography magazines and have done over the years. And at the end of the year, some of them actually collect all the best articles that they've published throughout the year and then put them into a bigger magazine and sell that as a special, a special edition. And it's stuff that the average reader will already have read throughout the year because they've been buying those magazines anyway. Now, people can come to your blog and read individual blog posts. But if you collate this into an overall uh, kind of a summary, a collection of all the information, that becomes the entire thing in one place rather than having to go from page to page. You can always add bits to it, add some extra information and that kind of thing or update it. But stuff that you have already created can become a product in its own right. Your articles yeah. can be turned into videos and webinars. A webinar can be a product. Now, where you're going to get a replay of this. This is effectively is a product because it helps train people on the use of the uh, niche debt site that we've sold you previously. So think outside the box a little bit because things that you have already done can be repurposed into a new product that people will be happy to have. So if you have a summary of information that's already out there, people like that. And now I think in the UK, do they call them cliff notes of like English literature and things like that, where you get a a summarized you know study aid well you've got the original right. information there anyway haven't you and, and you know so people pay for this kind of stuff all the time so it doesn't necessarily have to be a big difficult thing that you're creating it can be something based on what you already have um sitting there as your content so it can be easier than you think yeah don't be afraid to repurpose your content and to not even repurpose to take the same content as long as it's up to updated up to date and you know put it together it goes back to what i was saying the mentality of the marketer don't think well it's not new so you know <clears throat> people are going to think i'm trying to get pull a fast one over on it. no you just produced a bunch of quality content and you want to help them and it's going to be helpful so absolutely that's a good point point. and so the last uh point that i want to point out here is that it's just a reality a sad reality but most people quit because they don't see instant success We've been online. We've been doing this for 15 years. I can't tell you how many people in my personal life, friends and family who have come to me, hey, you do really well online. What do you do? Teach me how to do it. And they're all excited. <laughs> and then I say, hey, yeah, and I'm always happy to if somebody, you know, somebody I care for, especially somebody, you know, close to me, I want to help them if they really want to. And almost every single one, once they realize, you know, there's a little bit of work that needs to get to be put into it. You need to, you know, it's just like anything else then they just quit and they go back to their nine to five, not happy in their day job, not living the internet lifestyle. And it's just because they just weren't willing to put the work into it. Well, with niche debt authority sites, we've done a good majority of the work for you. The site is built, it's optimized. We've put you on the, the path to success. And now with this webinar, we've also given you uh, a lot of really good training to uh, kind of nudge you in that direction. So uh, what's left is for you to take this and to put it into action. Take what we've already built for you, what we've already done for you. We've cut so much time and effort and money out of it. And also testing. I mean, you have no idea how much testing we put into uh, these websites and getting them where they are. And so don't let that be you. Don't be one of those people who quits because you don't see instant success. You're probably not going to make a ton of money with your site a week from now. You're probably not going to make a ton of money a month from now, but you could be making a little bit and two months from now, three months from now, it could be multiplied if you put these things into action. So I just want to uh, just say that. Don't let that be you because so many people do. Oh, that's a neat little thing there. I didn't see. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have in this again, this isn't a training promo or a uh, this is this is a training webinar. It is not a promo webinar. But as I was saying earlier, if you remember, I said, don't be afraid to be to be a marketer if it helps the people. Well, we have a training program called Prosperative. Uh, well, Prosperative is our company, but we also have the Prosperative membership. And within that, we actually help people. We train people. People come to the private forum. They post a new thread with a question or they can email us privately and we give them expert answers and training to their specific questions. 
We also provide a bunch of, a ton of really valuable um, products in there. We give exclusive discounts on almost every one of our products, uh, including brand new products. And so we wanted to extend this offer to you, uh, a 40% off coupon, um, NJVIP, NicheJet VIP 11. That's a coupon code you can use to get 40% off your membership there. So we wanted to extend that to you. We're not going to be uh, pushy with you, but it will help. And that's why we want to offer that. If you're one of those people who just, you, you need uh, somebody to kind of hold your hand. I'm one of those people with a lot of things when I'm learning something new, I need somebody to hold my hand. Um, and so that's why we created this. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, it is available. And so uh, lastly, actually, I don't know if we have a question slide. I guess we don't. I think I missed that. Um, we do want to take some questions. Uh, Eamon, are you still with us? Because I am not seeing the questions again. For some reason, they're not showing oh, for me just like the last webinar. That, that is weird. I'll check with GoToWebinar separately. But um, I've been answering them while you've been talking. But let me go over some of the questions that people have been asking because they're great questions and they relate to how to use these topics. So David was asking, would we recommend using longer articles with more long tail keywords? Absolutely. There's various yeah. reasons. One is that actually Google can rank you for more keywords if you do. That. That's right. Long tail keywords, by the way, if you don't know what it means, it just means phrases with a few extra words in. Weight loss is a two word uh, keyword phrase. How to lose weight uh, quickly would be, uh, what's that, five words in there. So it would be a longer tail. It just means more words in the keyword phrase. Uh, and so you get the benefit of ranking that you never even thought about. But also, if you've got a longer article with good information, it's more valuable to your site visitors. So absolutely. But I do uh, want to absolutely. add to that, Eamon. Uh, do. Don't overdo it. Get yes. long tails in there. Absolutely. That's one of the primary reasons you want to do it. Well, one of the reasons. But don't overdo it. Don't make it unnatural. <clears throat> as long as you make it natural, you, I mean, it's, it's a long article, so you have your opportunity. Just make sure it's natural. Be focused on making it a quality authoritative article more than anything else. And throughout that process, you'll naturally have some long tails in there. And then you can have some that you can just kind of tweak uh, into, you know, phrases that, you know, get some search volume. And David has a follow up question, which kind of relates to your point there, Josh, which is, um, would you when you're doing your outreach and, and doing guest posting and so on, would you not create backlink links using exact keywords that you're trying to rank for? In other words, don't keyword stuff and the answer is no don't don't use a single keyword for your backlinks all the time very bad idea it doesn't work anymore you want lots of variety well, of keywords i do want to add i'm sorry Eamon. i don't mean to cut you go off ahead. No, no, uh, go we, ahead. we found actually in the last case study we did that if you have an exact match domain <clears throat> so if you have a domain um, or even a partial exact match domain or a partial match domain um theketodiet.com, for example. I don't know what's on that site. It's not mine. I just made it up. But the keto diet, you can get away with using keto diet as your anchor text more often than if you did not have an exact match or partial match domain. Uh, that doesn't give you a free ticket to just absolutely spam it, but you you can get away with more, and it does help you to rank more for keto diet in that particular example. So keep that in mind. But generally speaking, like Eamon said, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, having having the keyword in the anchor text does still help, I believe, but there's more of a negative than a positive. So in the long run, it hurts, if that makes sense, because they will allow you to get away with it more. And it still does help if you have a partial match or exact match. The thing I don't is know to if be confusing, be, but hopefully yeah. <laughs> some of it got through. It's a case of being organic. If it looks natural, then it's okay. But if you have a thousand links that all say keto diet weight loss, and you have two links that say, here's a diet plan for you. <laughs> well, you know, Google are not stupid. They, they can tell what you're doing. So you've got to be careful and try to be as organic as you can. Because in real life, if you were just getting links because people liked your content, They'd use different keywords all the time. They wouldn't use a single keyword. So it's just, it's a case of trying to be natural. David also asked a good question, which some people um, don't know about, and it's it's one we get regularly. Is it allowable to have AdSense and affiliate offers on the same page or post? And the answer is yes, yeah. you can. Keep them, keep them apart. You don't want to upset Google. Um, you know, don't put your AdSense right next to images and so on. But you can have multiple um, offers on the same page from different uh, sites. 
so I'm just scrolling down now. Um, just bear with me because we've covered quite a few of these. Longer tail, okay, backlinks. Uh, would Google automatically rank a post higher just because it has a video at the top of the post, the beginning of the post? I don't. I... I don't want to answer. I don't want to say definitely not. Um, I don't think it's going to be a no. I don't think it's going to really benefit you a whole lot in that direct way, but it is going to benefit you indirectly, I believe. And it, it's certainly not automatic. But bear in mind that a person watching your post or looking at your post might spend longer watching the video than they would reading an article, and how long they stay on your website could determine how Google views your website, because the longer somebody's on your website, Google tends to assume it must be because they like it. So we have something called a bounce back. I don't want to get too technical, but a, a bounce back where somebody comes back off your site very quickly suggests it's not a very good site. If they stay there for two minutes, it suggests they've enjoyed the content. So something that engages the user for a bit longer is beneficial. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you wouldn't automatically get um, better ranking, but generally it wouldn't hurt, uh, particularly if you've got a good video. Um, so let's have a look. Meg's got a point, which was um, a good one. Let's have a look. I've just scrolled past it. So where did we find it? Some, oh, here we go. Someone has just offered to um, give Meg a, a, an article for a guest post on her, her blog. So kind of the opposite of what we're saying. So somebody's coming to, to Meg. Um, but they've offered in exchange for posting the, the the guest post, they're offering to tweet all their followers uh, on Twitter. Now, Meg hasn't said how many followers they have, but that is giving Meg and her website a different type of exposure. So there's another thing that you could do. Um, if you build up a bit of a following on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, when you're posting a guest post, as well as the article, you can say, well, look, I could actually give you a link back to my followers. You'd have to make sure there's some degree of uh, correlation between what you're doing and what they're doing, but it's another way to give the website owner a benefit that might make them say yes to you. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Meg, actually, her first backlink, she's realized that she's uh, she's done all the backlinks in the first sets of articles with the word Meg, which is not a bad thing. That's fine. Um, but she's going to start using some real keywords now as well. I, hey, Eamon, I am seeing the, the questions. I just totally missed them before I was looking in the wrong place, I guess. Oh, isn't that weird? And I, yeah. And I see go. that Meg uh, asked about the Amazon site. So we did a promo for Amazon sites a little while back for NicheJet, <clears throat> basically authority sites, but rather than uh, the articles, uh, it was <clears throat> Amazon sites, Amazon affiliate products. And so to answer your question, Meg, um, everything is, is, is really – very similar in how we would promote that. Just obviously the authority pages you're not going to have, but you can have an authority page in the sense of a wide range of products on a specific topic and then just focus on that. And so, you know, it's a little different, obviously, in that sense that you're not, you know, you can't really build an authority Amazon affiliate product page. Um, but you just focus on all those other things. Focus on li li link building. I would focus more uh, than anything on link building. I would focus on building a presence on social media. So kind of uh, getting your brand, get some brand ambassadors out there. You'll be your number one brand ambassador. Uh, just building up that brand. So whenever people think of, you know, whatever it is, they think of you. And uh, going niche with Amazon sites, I think would be very beneficial because it'd be much easier to be an authority in the, you know, in the pet pig, <laughs> the pet mini pig niche, for example, than, you know, maybe the weight loss, you know, the keto niche or whatever. And so um, just focusing on getting some good, solid backlinks, focus on getting rankings, um, getting yourself out there in social media and putting everything else into place that we went over today. One thing I would add to that, Josh, for Amazon sites is that people, um, based on the questions we've seen in the past, people tend to assume that you have to do one thing or the other. You don't. You can mix and match. So you can have an Amazon site with like little store section uh, and adverts and so on. But you can also have a lot of great authoritative value oh, that's on that, true. Right? Right. adding articles. So let's, micro pig, you were talking about the pet pig, um, and micro pigs are quite popular in certain parts of the world. 
So all the things, well, no, that's a bad example. Keto diet, maybe, or um, kids' toys, kids' toys. This time of year, uh, you know, we're, we're all thinking about toys, aren't we? If you focused on, let's say, an article on the educational benefit of one type of toy over another, so that toys, uh, well, here's another example. Toys for children who have autism may need different types of stimulation compared to children who don't have that particular um, condition. And if you were to give valuable information there that would help the parents of a child with autism to choose a suitable toy for their two-year-old or three-year-old, they would naturally want to follow your recommendations because oh, anybody who has know. a child with that kind of condition needs information. And it may be that a certain toy is too stimulating for a, an autistic child, or it may not be stimulating enough. If you were to have a niche where let's say, in my example, photography, there's tons of things that you can sell from Amazon relating to photography, but many of them, people have no idea might, why you might use them. So here's an example. I'm going to give you a real life example of valuable content to do with a flash gun that might cost as much as several hundred um, dollars. By the way, I'm, are you doing a search on Google? There, yeah, <laughs> yeah you, okay. didn't, you noticed that, didn't you? Yeah. So I'm if you... If you were to want to promote a flash gun that costs several hundred dollars, right, and, and, and just promote that, that's fine. But why not explain to people how they can take a better portrait using a flash gun of that quality, but with a simple and inexpensive um, accessory? And then you could show them and maybe put a couple of images that you've taken yourself. Let me give you a real life example on that. If you use a balloon, a white colored balloon, and you blow it up and you stretch it over the top of a flash gun. I'm talking about accessory ones that clip on. The quality of the light that comes from using that 10 cent balloon is staggering compared to just the flash gun on its own. Now, how many people would even know that? Very few. But if I took a picture before and after to show the direct flash, which gives people, they look you know, startled and it's awful. And then I did this with this 10 cent balloon, which gives you a nice, even soft lighting, which is very attractive for people. I could prove instantly with that article that I know what I'm talking about and that here's how to make this flash gun even better. And by the way, this flash gun that I recommend has this feature, this feature, and this feature. Now, not everybody's going to go and buy the flash gun. Some of them are going to go and buy the balloons and, and use them on the flash gun they have. But I'm going to establish to people that I know what I'm talking about, that I'm helping them, that I'm giving them information to achieve their end result, the benefit. You remember Josh talked about benefits. The benefit that they're looking for is making their loved ones look even better on the pictures that they take. I can show them how to do that with a 10 cent balloon and a yeah. $600 flash gun. <laughs> so so I, can, I can actually have a combination of two types of sites. Does that make sense, Mike? Yeah, those are great points. Um, uh, somebody had asked, Michael uh, Banner uh, had asked if we could send the infographic about the longer articles, the stats and the case studies. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you go to Facebook and if you go to our page, Prosperative, Prosperative LLC, um, you, and you scroll down, it was shared um, October 17th. So you can find it there. We posted on the Facebook page. And if you haven't already, um, we invite you to follow our, our Facebook page, Prosperity of LLC. Uh, we post updates regularly, new products coming out, tips, etc. Yeah, I'm going to post the link for this. Just bear with me. So I've put the link in the chat box for our page. I'm going to see if I can actually find that infographic. Um, I'll give them the link if I can, Josh, but if not, they've got okay. Um, which infographic was this? I'm just trying to think which it was. Oh, yeah, it was the one about long, longer articles, why long articles earn much more money. Yeah, there's a ton of infographics on here. I'm not sure, but I, we've, we've run over. So, But I've put the link to our Facebook page on the chat box there if you need it. Yeah. And I'll just quickly check if we have any other new questions. I don't think we do. Um I think we've covered them all. Oh, Falker is saying, do we recommend to use the AdSense auto insert feature over a static plugin? Um, I don't think we've actually tested that, have we, Josh? Uh, I don't remember if it was that specific feature or if it was a similar feature, but we did test something that AdSense had just come out with uh, when we were uh, through a network. We were getting tons of traffic 
and we yeah. found that it did not convert as well. But oh, I don't know was... if that's the exact same feature or not. You just had to test to find out. You know, turn it on, see how your earnings are for a week, compare it to last week, and you'll know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's something you know many people simply do not test, and and it's amazing. You can get a real answer for yourself by testing. And by the way, every niche and website combination is different. So even if person A tests and finds that it works well for them, it may totally fail for person B. So you really actually have to test for yourself because the combination of your site, the way it looks, the type of content, the way you write and your topics, they all make a difference. And so there's no way anybody can tell you definitely yes or definitely no, unless they've done that testing on your particular combination of content, site and so on. I think we've covered everything. Uh, let me just check. Susan has actually given me a link to the... Ah, yeah, I'm going to put a link in, everybody, for the infographic. So in the chat box, the infographic um, link is there for you. Right, well, I'm not sure if Josh's audio has disappeared, but we've, we've run over. We were trying to make this last just an hour. We've gone to about uh, an hour and 25 minutes. So I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us. The information that Josh has shared with you, put it into practice and it will start to work for you. Now, it's not going to work tomorrow. You know, you have to build on this, as you've, as you've heard. But if you don't do this, it's definitely not going to work. So please put into practice the things that we've shown you and told you about. If you do have questions, you can contact us and we'll be happy to answer them. And tomorrow you will receive a link with the replay of this webinar because there's a lot of information to share. And we know that some of you will want to review various sections a few times. So you will be getting an automatic uh, email with that replay. So I'd just like to thank you one more time for joining us again. Thank you very much. Enjoy your websites and please put into practice all those things that we've told you about. See you again next time. Bye now.